I had a request to share my favorite sewing equipment or tools, and I am more than happy to oblige. The question that I asked myself to help me whittle down my selection of items is if I had to start from scratch all over again and source or find or purchase sewing tools starting over, what would I choose? And these are all the things that I would choose. I will do a different video about sewing machines, my sewing machines, and what I like about them, how I chose them, what I was looking for. So stay tuned for that in a coming video. For now, it's just gonna be sewing kit or sewing tools, sewing equipment, the kind of fun stuff where you get a list of supplies and you wanna see what to pick. So we are gonna start with cutting tools. The first thing that I wanted to share for cutting tools is a rotary cutter. The rotary cutter that I use the most is this LDH brand rotary cutter. And you can see compared to some other rotary cutters out there, this has a pretty thick handle. So I am left-handed but I use scissors with my right hand. So when I first started using a rotary cutter, I thought right hand. I just, I didn't do it very well. I found that I was veering off or I couldn't stay close to the line. And with particular rotary cutters, you can switch between left-handed or right-handed blade placement. It still didn't help me. I just couldn't figure out a way to use a rotary cutter that felt correct. And even if I used it in my left hand. So just, it just didn't work well for me until I tried this one. And I think it's the thickness of the handle and there's grips on both sides and it is ambidextrous. So you can kind of cut along, or I do, I cut along with my left and if I need to switch, I certainly can and I don't have to move the blade. So I love this rotary cutter. It's the first one that I felt successful with in terms of using a rotary cutter. It also comes with this reusable felt pouch. And if anyone's curious about how this functions, the blade cover moves with this switch here at the bottom. It takes standard blades, or you'll be able to see if you try this out, it takes um, some pretty standard, easily, easy to find blades. I use the LDH brand blades and I also find that I don't have to change it very often. So highly recommend this. This particular model is the Midnight Edition Rotary Cutter with Silver Blades. Sometimes I don't use a rotary cutter and that in those instances I'm using dressmaking shears. These were given to me as a gift by my mother-in-law. These are Kai scissors. The particular model is 7230. So these are nine inch shears. They're stainless steel and needless to say, they cut really well. They are not too heavy either. They're not lightweight, but they're also not excessively heavy. So I recommend they, they are costly, they are expensive. If you get it as a gift, that's a plus. If you're on the fence, I mean, there's plenty of scissors that certainly cut fabric and get the job done. It doesn't have to be super expensive. These I just find I will probably keep forever. And between these and my rotary cutter, I really feel like I'm set in terms of cutting fabric. I know that LDH does scissors as well. So if you don't have a pair of dressmaker shears, you might wanna look into theirs if they have a set, probably just as quality as their rotary cutter. In terms of cutting instruments, having a small pair of scissors, either embroidery scissors or thread snips is also really, hand really handy. These in particular are my Ginger embroidery scissors. I've had these for a very long time, since college, and they are just as sharp. I do take very good care of them, but they've lasted many, many years. So 
These are really great as well. You can also find any other kind of small embroidery scissors um, at your local sewing supply shop or craft store. They don't have to be fancy, but the key thing is that um, they give me more dexterity. So if I'm snipping threads or something really small where I want control, it's just helpful to have small scissors. Staying within the theme of cutting, seam ripper. Seam rippers often come with your sewing machine, so you may not have to purchase this. I find that I often, I have a few different seam rippers. I often grab my clover seam ripper. I couldn't tell you why. Maybe it's the, the handle that I just really like and is easy to hold. Maybe it's particularly sharp here in that little underneath the red. I don't know. I, I'm a big fan of the Clover Seam Ripper and if I had to purchase my Seam Ripper from scratch, I would, I would look specifically for this one. In my videos, you have probably have seen me use this buttonhole cutter. It comes with a little cutting mat and then this chisel is 12 millimeter, this particular one. And it's also by Clover. So a buttonhole chisel isn't automatically a necessary item. There are lots of different ways to cut buttonholes. You can use your embroidery snips. You can use your seam ripper with the needles on the opposite sides of your buttonhole to keep it from going too far. I haven't had much luck with those. I either do rip through the buttonhole or I end up kind of like chop, like chopping at it in a very kind of sloppy, messy way. So this just makes a really nice, even clean cut and it's super fast. So back to that original question, if I had to start over from scratch, what would I choose? This little combination would definitely be on my list. You can also just buy the chisel. It doesn't have to, you don't have to spend extra for a kit with the mat. This does make it easy because then I, I can just leave it up here on my sewing table. A pattern notcher. This is, this is a fun thing. This is by far not a necessary tool. And what this does is it lets you take your pattern piece, you notch where the notches are, and it gives you a cutout versus just a slit or just a slice or a cut. It gives you a cutout. So then you put your piece on your fabric and then you can see the fabric through it. So you are, I find that I'm at least less inclined to forget to do my notches when I actually see the fabric peeking through on the pattern piece. So pattern matcher, uh, relatively inexpensive little device. I keep it on my cutting table. It's definitely something that I use on a regular basis. I use clips a majority of the time. So if I had to start from scratch and I wanted to build up my sewing kit again, I would most definitely get sewing clips. You can find these, again, at any sewing supply, any craft store. They're often called quilting clips. They're so much faster than pinning. The downside about these is that you can only clip as far as the clip goes. So if for whatever reason you needed to pin further in to sew a facing, then you would most likely use pins. In terms of which clips, I'm not partial. I think I bought Wonder Clips at one time and then I think I bought Generic Clips and they both do the job well. I also feel that way about pins. So I try to find pins that are somewhat long. Uh, I don't know if this is gonna show. Somewhat long, I'm not too particular about anything else when it comes to pins. I do try to check that they um, are iron or heat resistant. And then I also use a magnetic pin cushion. Because when I'm sewing, if I'm taking out pins, I can kind of just toss it to the pin cushion and it, and it will usually catch it. Pattern weights. So pattern weights with a rotary cutter work really well. I don't, I, I tape my patterns together. I often download PDF patterns, print them out and tape them. And I find that even with a thin printer paper, 
pushing a pin through printer paper and two layers of fabric, which for me is kind of like a mid-weight linen or sometimes a denim or a cotton. It's just kind of thick. So pattern weights work great because it holds it down, holds it in place. I will often use a really heavy item in the center. So I have some vintage irons that I use and I kind of just move that around based on what I'm cutting. But these pattern weights could be really great. And these again, were also a gift for my mother-in-law. I think it's just a hardware, a piece of tool or hardware inside that's wrapped in ribbon and then with a glue stick or sorry, a glue gun, the ribbon is taped down. But you just place these around your pattern, use a rotary cutter. Sometimes I will use this on the pattern, I will hold on to it, and that will be how I kind of drive around with the rotary cutter. So pattern weights of any kind. Another thing that I use for pattern weights are old coasters, like old drink coasters, ceramic tiles or I have like a mismatched set of coasters and those work great for pattern weights. So marking tools, I have favorites. These are my favorites. There are a ton of marking tools out there. There are a lot of suggestions. I have more in my sewing cart that I just don't use. These are what I use and grab and look for all the time. So the first one, is these water soluble pencils by Clover. They come in three colors. I use these almost exclusively. So whether it's marking marks on my fabric or marking buttonhole placement, marking darts, marking pocket placement, these are what I use. And then the different colors obviously will be dependent on your fabric and what shows on your fabric. And so these work fantastic. I, I love them. And then they wash out. The other thing that I use is this disappearing ink pen. This one in particular, it is air and water soluble. The key thing about this, I will tend to use it um, when I'm placing the spots for buttons. I will mark whatever it is I need to mark and then I go immediately to sew because again, it's disappearing. I think the time, the window of time is, it's hours, it's a, it's a while, but I don't think it's a day. It might be a day, I don't know. I've never been so reckless and tested that out, but I will basically mark a buttonhole placement or a button placement or something, something that I need to mark and then I'll immediately go to my machine and, and take care of what it is that I needed to do. But this is great because it also washes out as well. Between these disappearing ink and these water soluble pencils, these are my primary marking tools. I do have dressmaker's carbon. I do have a tracing wheel. I do have friction pens and Chaco liners with like the, um, the metal track that kind of rolls and spins. For all of those, I just don't, I just don't gravitate towards them. I find that I end up kind of having to go back and forth multiple times to get something to show, whereas these are just really straightforward. For measuring tools, I think it varies. Any, any tape measure is fine. I'm not particular about a tape measure, so I don't have one to share. I would recommend just finding whatever one you like. One thing that I do like and I am particular about and I always reach for are my seam gauges by Wawak. And the thing about these seam gauges is that they are thicker and more sturdy than say the Dritz seam gauge. They all do the job, so whatever you have is perfect. It's great. If you're in the market though, if you log onto the Wawak website, these seam gauges, if you could buy two or three and keep them at different stations and I think that you won't regret it. They're just thicker, they're more robust. They don't feel like the thin aluminum that might bend and then therefore be incorrect. And then um, the number markings are, they are printed, but they are, it just feels a little bit more robust, less likely to rub off. So these are my favorite seam gauges. I have one at my sewing machine, I have one at my ironing table, and then I have one at my cutting table. 
In terms of, this might be a good segue into something else. This is called a hot prep, I don't, I think it's called a hot hemmer or something along those lines. I'll put a link in the descriptions. This I use all the time. This is by Clover and it is a felt marking tool in order to hem and you can iron and press. It's really handy because it's, it's long enough. If you're, if you're hemming a dress or hemming the bottom of a top, you just fold your fabric over to the line that you, whatever your hemline is. You can see I've marked my five eighths and my three eighths on there just to be sure. But you just kind of press your fabric over and then you can press right directly onto this tool, take it off, move it along and press again. So very handy, very helpful, which takes me into this next tool, Taylor's Clapper. So this is the Taylor's Clapper that I use. I purchased this from a vendor on Etsy and I noticed that they also sell it on Amazon. So I will be able to attach, a, I will be able to show you guys a link. This is just a cute little thing. Taylor's clappers don't always have a pin cushion. This is just a cute little, a cute little adorable thing. And I'll also, when I'm pressing and I'm holding this down, it actually gives my palm something to kind of hold on to but it has measurements, which you can see. A clapper is really great for pressing, not just because it helps hold the press and let it cool down underneath, but particularly for fabrics that you don't want to iron for too many seconds, like a delicate fabric or a synthetic fabric. Sometimes I will use this, I will press briefly, place this on top, it cools underneath and it really holds the press. The other benefit of using this is that you can, rather than have to use your fingers, you can press and then you can have this guy kind of follow along and hold the fabric down in addition to reinforcing your pressed fabric. So I highly recommend a Taylor's clapper. It's just, not only is it useful for the actual pressing and holding the press, but I feel like it's also just another hand. It's giving you another hand while you're pressing to hold things down. In the same vein of pressing tools, we have a Taylor's ham. So I have to say that when I was looking for a Taylor's ham, I resisted and I hesitated for a long time. I read mixed reviews and then I also, well, I read mixed reviews. This is the Dritz Taylor's ham, and it's flannel on one side, and then it's smooth cotton on the other side, and it has sawdust on the inside. I use this a lot for either darts, either on tops or bottoms. I'll use it inside of a shoulder when I'm pressing. It is very handy and I actually do use it nearly for all projects. Some of the reviews have said that the sawdust inside is not good or that this is smaller than they expected. Just for reference, this, this is how big it is. I have medium sized hands and this is how big this, this thing is. So it's, it, it'll do the job. I think it'll do the job really well. Um, I can actually measure it. It's more than, it's maybe seven inches long. So I would recommend a Taylor's ham just for shaping. They're not too expensive. Your local craft store might have a particular sale. It's worth it. One thing I don't have is a seam roll. So they make this in a long kind of sausage shape. That's something that I haven't had to use and I haven't missed and I probably will never purchase because there is this. So this is a chest board for ironing. And then this is the sleeve board down here. So I have this two sided tool. I put this on top of my ironing board and I use this, yes, for sleeves, but I also use it for seams. So a seam roll would help you do seams, but this also does seams really well too. It's a good size. This is not particularly heavy. It's a Jacobson products product. And the chessboard, you can kind of see the imprint from the tape that's underneath. 
it still works really well. I'll do another video giving you a tour of my sewing room. My ironing board is extra wide. So this actually works really well because if I can't get a top kind of wrapped around the ironing board, then this actually works really well. I use this almost just as often as I would use an ironing board. The other thing that I would want to share, and this is not really a purchase item. I, I think I bought this fabric for something else, but having press cloths is an absolute necessity. It helps prevent interfacing from getting on your ironing board, as well as prevent interfacing from getting on your iron. If it gets on your iron, um, it ends up dragging across other fabrics. So having press cloths at the bottom on your ironing board, as well as on top when you're ironing on interfacing, could be really helpful. And then if you have delicate fabrics as well and you want to prevent shine or accidentally burning your fabric, using a press cloth can help as well. You can purchase press cloths, but that was something that I really just could not bring myself to do anytime I saw that at the sewing supply store. So I just made my own and they seem to be working pretty well. This is a really thin cotton and then I surged it myself and then I just throw these in the wash and then they get ironed when I'm pressing. So easy, low cost, and I actually feel an absolute necessity to have press cloths. So I'm hopeful that this was a helpful video for you. If you use any of these tools, I would love to hear. If I shared anything and you were thinking like, hey, Cleo, I, you, you might wanna try this, this other thing, please let me know. I'm always open to exploring and considering new ideas. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. If you found that helpful, give me a thumbs up. And if you wanna check out some more of my videos, be sure to hit subscribe, and I will see you all very soon.